Hello from School of Supernatural in uh, Lake Katrina Yard. We greet the ones in the other nations right now that are, are, are watching us uh, or live on Facebook and those. Amen. So let's pray, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. We praise and worship you, Lord, above every name. God, I magnify you to none like unto my God. You are the great I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are my God in whom I trust. I decree the kingdom of heaven is near right here, right now. I heal the sick. I cleanse the lepers. I raise the dead. I cast out demons. Freely I have received and freely I give. Holy Spirit, take your liberty. As a legal Lord, respond to you, Holy Spirit. Lead and guide us to the all truth. Father, your will be done on earth in this class as it is in heaven. Yes. Amen. Yes. <clears throat> so, um, um, I guess if I would title it, it's a little complicated trying to title it today because not, I'm not going to be preaching what you think I'm getting ready to preach from sort of scripture like this. And, and um, but uh, I'm going to be sharing uh, what it takes to trigger a sound from heaven. What it takes to trigger a sound from heaven. It's the anniversary wishes we had our 56th anniversary, took the trip with our first rodeo. Night before we went to the tent revival, then we went to the rodeo the next night. Nice. And I enjoyed both of them. <laughs> Acts chapter 1, verse 4. <clears throat> so just bear with me while we're going through some scripture, a little bit lengthy, but uh, I think you'll understand. Um, and we're talking about what would trigger a sound from heaven. Or you could say, what would call a manifestation of the spirit? Like one prophet used to say, there's a difference between a manifestation of God and a man infestation. A big difference in our world. <clears throat> you had to excuse my glasses. Uh, mine fell out the other day at the class, and my wife put them in, and I fell asleep on my sofa last night, and I knocked my glasses off, and both cheers. Uh, even got grease smears on them for me. <laughs> okay, verse 4, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the, <clears throat> for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, we at this time restored times or seasons which the Father has put his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea, and so them to go back to Jerusalem to wait, and uh, in verse 4, uh, not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, and so we see what they did, a major sound from heaven, they're triggering it by obedience to what God said, a lot of people do not understand that, that our obedience will literally trigger a sound from heaven, or we had just the other night at the home, some of y'all were there, and we began to pray for someone, and we prayed for him earlier, and then we got ready, we just mentioned praying, all of a sudden, I felt some of the spirit falling, and electricity, boom, I mean, from the top of my head, there's so much feet, it's like electricity hit me, and, and we began to pray, I mean, I just, uh, like, I was charged, and when I felt the presence, I said, let's pray right now, we'd already prayed earlier for the same person, but I knew in my heart of hearts, it's time to pray now, I've shared it. <clears throat> I've been here since 83. I've not lost my accent. We'll go back once a year, visit family, and you are accent like a passport. You know, make sure we don't lose it. Fill with them. A, a low one fix um, barbecue and the old country long porch fill. One side of the home was filled with family members who could not fit at the table. And we, we blessed the food and said, I just here to take a bite to my sister along my wife's sister. I said, God's here. When I said that, boom, it exploded in there. The power got hit. People flew off their chairs. I saw one person, the demons coming out. I'm like, amen. I was beginning to prophesy. People weeping, speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Amen. But it was because I obeyed God when I felt, uh, I just said, well, I'm just weak. Uh, I said, oh, did I announce? You've heard my message. It's on YouTube. I have like 111, 112 on there now. And uh, you go to my, my website, riverlifeworldmission.com. Fix the show of hit uploads and all 112 will drop down. After this, it'll be 113 on there. <clears throat> and uh, return the word. And when we return the word to God, it's something powerful. Yeah. But it comes out, which I've said it years ago in prayer. God spoke to me. He said, David, I don't return my word. I, I really raised a heresy fight. He said, you return. But understand the spirit realm, like in creation. I just share a little synopsis of the message. Uh, that in creation, he did not plant gardens. He created gardens with the seed in it growing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And, and, and that's how it works. God already sent the word, but we have to take it in faith and return to God. Or God hit because I activated what God did. Uh, all I felt, uh, uh, I didn't feel like David, I'm getting ready to fall in this place. No. Uh. But I knew it was God. Opinion, Cordial 3 and 8. I believe in the seed of human spirit. It's the same place. You see a rattlesnake on the trail. Go, huh? Same place. And I feel a lot in there, a lot of thumps in the spirit. Okay. But but it triggered the response. Okay. So we, we read these and go back to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. And tell them you'll be doing power. 
See, so, so many Christians so confused. If this Christian heard somebody say this, and they repeated this, and you remember that game of gossip? People just play at parties. You pass it down by the time. That's the way it is. They keep changing it. I'm not a carpenter, but they say you take a one foot board, you measure one foot board, you cut it, take that last that board you cut, put it on, measure, cut, maybe 100 boards, you'll be about an inch short. You keep losing a, a saw width. That's what a lot of people have done with the Word of God. Uh, many groups that keep taking, well, we'll take this little piece off. Boy, that but, uh, don't do that. I want to see what he said. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Okay, let's go to Acts 2. <clears throat> verse 1. Thank you, the verse. Acts 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, stop there a minute, alive, God suddenly shows up. Uh, uh, one of my trips to Israel, went, gone a couple times on Mount of Beatitudes, coming down the bus. We read the Beatitudes, sang the song, the dice, come down the bus, and suddenly, God minutes an hour, I was weeping and speaking in tongues. You think I was in intercessory prayer, but I wasn't. I was in a dimension of God I did not know existed at that time. God, we didn't have that plan. We didn't call a big fast, long prayer meeting. Okay, now it's going. No, no. Suddenly, boom, God shows up. Hallelujah. Let God arise. Amen. <clears throat> so Hallelujah. suddenly, there was a sound. Everybody say sound. sound. From heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled as of fire. And one sat upon each of them. And they're all filled with the Holy Spirit. Begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, I'd love to preach today, but understand, you receive, you receive His Spirit and go to heaven. Yeah. But he, he really wants you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit as evidence of speaking to others. You shall receive power. In fact, if you read your Bible carefully, uh, you'll find that from Acts 1 that he's going to go back to Jerusalem and wait till you do with power on high. To Acts 2, the preacher out to preach without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. A lot of people say, oh, God told me to go preach, and they don't have it. Uh, when I was in Bible college in Houston, we had a pastor who preached against the baptism of the Holy Spirit in his group, and he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He stood there with the Bible. He said, when I received it, the Bible was like a new book to me. You know, he'd graduate and, uh, you know, uh, highly educated. But, but some people were ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. But we see, he said, the Bible is a brand new book. Why? Because Jesus is the truth. Amen. This is something you're never going to understand. Amen. My children from young age, they had the baptism of the Holy Spirit, baptized in water. What? I don't understand why people do not. The Bible says he wants you to have it. And remember, it was not to the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus that the baptism of the Holy Spirit was the of Christ on the earth at one time. As he walked his earth, he's the body of Christ. Yeah. But he said, expedient that I go away. I go not away to the Father, the, the Comforter, the Father. We're the body of Christ. He's ahead of the body. We are the body of Christ on the earth right now. Amen. There's too many Christians that have. Come on. Amen. Read the book. And so they obey God. We got a lot more scripture to go to in a moment. They obey the Lord. It triggered a sound from heaven. As I was seven months pregnant, carrying me, my dad just got out of the military. She stayed at her mother's house. She's in her room. It's suddenly a strong wind blew in the room. And an audible voice later, that strong wind blew in the room again, again said, get out of the house. She said, why? He said, because of the child. She said, go away, leave me alone. It did. But two weeks later, she's thrown to the windshield right side. Though she didn't really know God in her own way, she said, Lord, let the child be born healthy. And I raised him to serve you. I was born healthy. When I was seven years old, we both... Uh, we're back with the tent revival. Sit on the back road, had a big old chunks of salt. It's not a little salt, a big old chunk. The sisters back then had the big old hairdos. They're following in salt. There's a people jump out of wheelchairs, throw crutches down, testify their blind eyes open. And amen. amen. Uh, Pastor Derek, I had him sh share the other night, uh, just uh, last week. The old people that I mentioned are working miracles, seeing in the spirit, traveling in the spirit. That, that's what happened. You, you need a mentor, you need a spiritual father one that walks in the power. You walk around dead ministry, guess what? You'll be just like them. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Yeah, some people out there don't even believe grease is fat. Okay. That tent revival, and suddenly my mother screamed and jumped up, and all seven ribs were set. The young child saw like my knuckle, like big calcium deposits. She considered having red, and she passed away in 93. They're still set. And so as a seven year old child, I saw this miracle. Yeah. Amen. It affected me. It really did. Come on. Amen. Little did I know what God had a plan for me. That's right. 18. <laughs> First Kings chapter 18. Praise God. Enjoy my little holder. You folks got me. Of course. Used to fall down like an old sock, but it's fixed now. First, First Kings. 
I had pairs of short socks. I wear my shorts. Went to the Corbett's the other day. They were, they were probably somewhere. I said, uh-uh. I'm, I'm not going, they're not going back to watch. They're going to Corbett. I'm not going to pick them up again. So anyway, okay, now I got you awake. Okay, First Kings 18. <laughs> said Ahab, go up, eat, and drink. Now listen to this, for there is a sound of the abundance of rain. Just stop there, Mo. We'll go further in a minute. Don't worry. There's a sound of the abundance of rain. Where do you hear it? God, they hear a sound of the abundance of rain. Yep. When there's no rain yet, remember, he spoke the drought, remember? Yes. But then God let him go and pray to, to open it up. Of abundance of rain. Okay, verse 42. So Ahab was very happy to do this. He went up and ate and drank. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I told him about big, uh, I said, you know who's going to be there? The Old Testament people. The Edomites and the Moabites. Just give me one more bite. Yeah. <laughs> 33 years of pastor, I learned if you have a fellowship lunch, you fill the house. Oh my Amen. They love their, their food. You feed them, they'll come. So Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel. Then he bowed down to the ground and put his face between his knees. Very limber. And he said to his servant, go up now. Look toward the sea. Because he expected to see something. And he went up and looked and said, there's nothing. And seven times he said, go again. He kept looking. I don't see anything. But the man of God knew. I heard a sound mm -hmm. of the abundance of rain. Hallelujah. Don't look at circumstances. Hallelujah. Circumstances begin to sink. But Jesus pulled him up. And I don't think, as I've told you, I don't think put him in a, a, a breaststroke and a hang on people will make it to the boat. No, I think they walk back to the boat. Oh, that's my opinion, my humble opinion. So seven times go again. Then it came to pass, verse 44, the seventh time he said, there's a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, go up and the rain stops you. That happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind. And there's a heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. You get to see Elijah's a good runner. The hand ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. <laughs> he outran the chariot. Wow. But the Bible said the hand of the Lord came on. When God's hand comes on, you do a lot of things. Oh, yeah. Okay. But, and he's obeying God. He heard the abundance of rain. I'm sending my servant out to look at the cloud. I've been on Mount Carmel twice in Israel. Uh, the first time I was there, um, you look down, you look at the valley of Jezreel or the, uh, the where the battle of Armageddon would take place. Mm -hmm. The Bible said the blood would be to the horses bridled about 48 inches deep. Okay? And, and um, the thing is, uh, you look down, there's an airstrip down there. And the first time we were there, the Israeli jets were like bumblebees out there. When the scriptures about when the fire fell, uh, with, with Elijah, with the prophets of uh, Baal. And right when he said the fire fell, a jet came up there and it boom, right on top of the mountain. We all went straight in the air. I mean, I mean, he could have planned it that way. No way. And, and so the thing is, the, the, the man of God heard, he didn't say, well, I'll just hold this. And no, he took action. Amen. Amen. And he said, his servant, look, and for six times he came back. I don't see anything. Go back again. Don't look at circumstances. Just hold on. If God said it's going to come to pass. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise God. I said, that's enough. They had to bring it off this mountain. It's coming. It did. But see, that, that, that sound, that rain, that sound from heaven, that rain was triggered by obedience by the man of God. Response, if you like, from heaven and obedience. It will actually happen. Okay, let's go to 2 Samuel. We'll see about David. 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel. Chapter 5. Verse 23, 2 Samuel chapter. Therefore, David inquired of the Lord. Stop there a minute. You know, it's a good thing to ask the Lord. Mm -hmm. Some people just go out and do their own thing. Well, this is my idea. Boom, they're on the way. He inquired of the Lord. Here's what God said. You shall not go up, circle around them, and come up on them in front of the mulberry trees. Verse 24, I love this. It shall be, when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of you shall advance quickly. Then the Lord will go out before you to strike the camp of the Philistines. And David said, did so as the Lord is geezer, the old geezer. Amen. And so the thing is, uh, David inquired the Lord. The Lord said, okay, here's what you're going to do. You'll go here and don't, don't move again until you're with you. Oh, my, so my angel teachers I have on YouTube. That um, uh, one time I was getting ready to go to Guam to preach a revival. Uh, a friend of mine was pastoring there. He used to be a Navy SEAL in uh, one of the first band spacecraft. Uh, them hooking the hooks on it. Uh, John Wolfer, my friend, was the man who was the lead frog man with the Navy, hooking it on. And then from there, I was going to Vietnam. Into, it had an altar area, and just to the left, there's an exit door. Just past the exit door, uh, a squad of angels walked in. And they looked like giant man. Doesn't seem like bright light, but these were like the shape of big white pillars, like in, in front of a house. And they came in, slowly walking, right across at an angle. And what's happened, the place went wild. 
would wow. uh, a friend, uh, Pastor John Wolf from in his midweek service, different time zone, his sea angel, they told his church, I feel like an earthquake off the coast of Guam. And many times the natural and the supernatural working together. Okay, not always, but many times. And the thing is, those angels, God spoke to me when I saw them. In fact, we got to be now with the Hanoi, Haiphong, and uh, all kinds of places. As you know, I've been called four times by communist police in there. But God's got me out every time. I fought there during at least physical peace. Emotionally, I was a wreck, but God, God healed me. Come on, Amen. Amen. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, with David, that sound as a host of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. And God said, I'm going before. I will fight for you. Hallelujah. We go instance as instance in the Bible on that, but we won't today. Obedience um, by David caused a sound of marching in the mulberry trees. Had he went somewhere, I just know, Lord, I, I really think going on this side would be better. I just feel that that's a good idea. Uh -huh. Think about it. How many times do people do that? Your obedience would trigger a sound and or a response from heaven. Same thing. Our friends in South Africa told me a while back. They said, we say same, same in South Africa too. I didn't know it. Okay, Acts chapter 12. We're reading here, we'll find out that the, the, the sound of prayer be sprung from jail. See, uh, Acts 12, verse 5. <clears throat> Peter therefore kept in prison, but constant, but was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him. By that, yes, we need prayer meeting, we need a prayer intercede, speak the word of God, pray in the spirit, pray in your language, call the things to be not as though they are. We study that, but when you go public, we've got. Praise God. We've seen over, my wife and I have seen over 12,000 miracles worldwide. But we had to learn that I couldn't, and I didn't get to show you tonight, but you know, get, someone come up and pray, oh, Lord, Father, please. You know, to help the poor. Oh, Lord, please, please, like some Christians do. Uh-uh. Jesus didn't do that. He commanded it. He spoke to it. Amen. Sometimes you lay hands on it, he just spoke to it. Amen. And over 10 years ago, she had metastatic cancer, breast cancer that kills women very quickly. My wife and I prayed on the phone on Saturday night to them in Maryland. She was healed. She was still on trauma. Um, I, I, I verified with my medical expert uh, some things that somebody wrote. I said, man, I never heard this. I said, let me check. And I'm awesome uh, how some things in the body is affected by trauma mm -hmm. and, and what will release people from it. That's, that's what I want to share with you. That's that mean. Okay, so but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. <laughs> Verse 6, and when Herod was about to bring him out, that night, they'd already killed James. And uh, now they're, 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 they're well, man, people like that. Let's do it to Peter, too. But God had another plan, and people were praying. And when Herod was about to bring him out that night, Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers. And the angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison. And there's so many times that light of God just comes in. Amen. Yeah, suddenly. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Hands. Now, let's stop there just a moment. We'll read some more. But the obedience of the church praying, making an intercessory prayer for Peter. Caused the sound of chains falling off. Come on. In the service, somebody prophesied. Uh, I don't know his name. Uh, I know who it is, but I don't know his name. But as he was prophesying in the main service, I smelled a, a, a dip in snuff. You know, your nasty smell. And that down south, uh, my old pastor said, told people, uh, 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 walk right, talk right. Like they had worm, look like they had worm bed in their mouth. You go pray for them. Oh, goodness, I can't look at you. Close my eyes and pray. Which I would not watch him pray. But, but, but anyway, I said, that addictions are being broken. Last week, I mentioned here that I mentioned overcoming fear. Patrick had, had me share again. Some of you guys have shared your testimonies about how own fears from childhood were broken off Hallelujah. right here in this class. Amen. 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 We're not playing church. No. And, and so when I preached last week at the main church field, when I opened it up for people to come up and confess their fear, and, and the language of doing halfway up both aisles, people trying to get to the altars for deliverance in that one service. It showed me the week before. See, I held all that. God, you said it. You showed it to me. Come on. And look, it bumps on my arm. I feel like I should put more gook in my hair. Uh, okay, rise quickly. His chains fell off his hand. Verse 8, then the angel said to him, gird yourself and tie on your sandals. And also, before we go further, notice that the angel had to hit. Uh, my loved one just had his head cut off. the cut mine off. I probably would not be sleeping that well. But Peter, man, he was, he was dozing, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, think about it. Don't worry. Now, and following him, did not know what was done by the angel was real. That, that was done. But thought he was sleeping, seeing a vision. When they, they were past the first and the second post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them and down one street immediately the angel departed for him. Or the, the, the chains fall off. 
they go through walk just walk out amen uh uh, you know, uh, obviously the guard times and uh, going to Cambodia usually first. I've been 22 times back to Vietnam, 22 times into Cambodia. And then from there, I take the bus, it's cheap, it's rough ride, but it's cheap to go to Vietnam, you know, about six, seven hour run, you know. I never met before, we were going to Vietnam ahead of me that I barely knew. And then I, I, I got ready to pack up my suitcase. I leave part of myself in Cambodia. I go to Vietnam, then I go back to Cambodia, measure, then I fly home. My big Thompson. And I went to put in my suitcase. The Holy Spirit said, don't put it in there. I pull it back. Two more times I tried. It takes a while so I get my head. Don't, don't, don't bring it. Instead, I were arrested in Kamau and I, I'm in the computer system. She's not. And uh, when I go through the, the checking in to, to Vietnam, a bell goes off. It doesn't go off for her because they just had to make a case on me. Thank God. <laughs> and, and, and so I didn't bring the Bible. I took all my notes, quarter folded, and put in my big old video case, sitting under my arm with the old big video camera, modern like an airport. But it used to be the old one, had a huge table, as wide as this room, and, and uh, you know, at least 12 to 15 feet long. And they take all the suitcases, all your bags, they double check the bus, you didn't have anything, they, the latest pocketbooks, laptop, everything to go through uh, and check in. And I'm standing only about maybe five to six feet from one of the communists. Uh, he's under my arm, my arm stuck up like this. He never saw it. Amen? Amen. And I found out later that my friend, uh, when he went in, he was smuggling in a 500 music, Christian music CD. And now the only suitcase, no CDs. He said, I know I didn't live in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. He got to, he has a, his own apartment in uh, Ho Chi Minh City, Army Saigon. Go to the suitcase, all 500 sitting there. It, it was, Amen. Amen. God does that. Who knows how many times that I didn't get arrested going by because they couldn't see me walk by. Who knows? I don't know. But God, he's God. Amen. So verse 11, let's keep reading. The, the angel disappeared from him and got through, got through the gates. When Peter had come to himself, he said, they sat there in just a moment. Oh, uh, well, pastor goes by here for years to God had me quit the office door and it opened on its own. Just one by like, like three times. And when I read that about that gate opening, just uh, the only thing God was doing is show me, David, I can do this stuff. I don't think I've ever been up here in this thing. Amen. <laughs> but I mean, I walked by it open and I played, played that door. Ain't no way. It couldn't do it. You know, I play, you know, if this is my imagination, I want to know it. It's God with not God. That's right. I've got someone around this area that I, I corrected a while back, right in their home. I told them, I said, you're, you're trying to make everything God said that God did this, this, that. You're attracting demons because mm -hmm. they know you don't know the spirit of God. And they're going right back to doing it. Okay, I look at their Facebook post. I see it. I, I did my job. Mm -hmm. you know, oh, huh. come on. There's a hyper, everything. Uh -uh. Careful. Three minutes. Okay, verse 11, when Peter had came to himself, he said, now I, am, I know for certain that the Lord had sent his angel and delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people, they were going to get it. They came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice, because they ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate, and they said to her, you're beside yourself. Yet she kept insisting that it was so. They said, it is his angel. I could preach on that, but I won't right now. Some of you heard me talk about it. Now, Peter continued knocking, and when they opened, motioned to them with a hand to keep silent, he declared to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, go tell all, all these things to James and to the brethren. He departed and went to another place. He preached. Yes, uh, it's interesting. They're praying for Peter to be released. And Peter <laughs> knocked at the door, and they were not expecting that. Mm, yeah. I tell you, when I, when I come in, we've had cancers big in my hand to disappear all people's neck. When I, when I tell people to check this out, I said, don't look for the, the symptom or the tumor. Look for the absence of it. Right. She said, when you pray, believe you have received, you shall receive. Some people are looking for a pain. Oh, if I make, I make it hurt. No, no. If you believe you're healed, why are you looking for the pain? Come on. Amen. 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 Like some people come up to me, Pastor, pray for me with God's will to heal. Heal me. The chance of being healed, though, I, I've seen all these thousands of it. It is his will. This is his will. This is a legal document standing in the course of heaven. Heaven and earth shall pass away. The word of God will not pass away. Amen. It is his will. I believe it's God's will to heal you. Why'd you go to the doctor to get better? Mm -hmm. We're not against medical science. Praise God for that. We glad we love doctors, but they are practicing. Yeah. <laughs> I've read some of his posts on that. Okay, let's go to Mark 11. Almost through. Not, not quite, but almost. But I guess I have the scripture for my message. Mark 11. Uh, Mark 11. Oh, verse 22. Yep. <clears throat> Bullets. Praise God. I woke up minding my own business. Mark 11, verse 22. I woke you up. So Jesus answered, said to them, Have in there is of in the Greek, have the faith of God. 
you're standing there, Paul said, the old King James, I pray you in Christ said, when I'm laying hands on you, Christ is laying hands on you. See, he had a revelation as he was. That's right. And so it has have faith, the, have the faith of God that he's Christ to me, the hope of glory. When I'm claiming hands on you, Jesus is claiming hands. That's some, some little guy, oh, I don't know if I have power. Mm -hmm. Don't pray for me, please. Yeah. Make it worse. <laughs> Verse 23, for surely I said to you, whoever says to this mountain, notice, he does not down in his heart, but believes that those things which he says will be done. Somebody said that a while ago. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say, you, now we see therefore or wherefore, it means that, Lord, what I just, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus said to speak to the mountain. He said to speak to it. When we pray for me, we command it. Amen. But you know, no, get out. Yes. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Some of y'all have testified right in here and upstairs that multiple demons came out of you when we clamped hands on you. Here, Jason, there's something about that sofa. <laughs> Not the sofa, it's the God yes. of the house. Come on. Amen. Uh, our house, your house should be peace. Your home should be, have peace. Not, not the reverse. Amen. It should be a, a city of refuge. Yeah, I'll share some of that with you one day. Us praying would trigger a response from heaven. Whether it's healing, whether it's angels showing up, or demons being cast out. Okay, one one more. Um, I'll, I'll just read it to you. I got a handwritten here. When most of you can quote it, I know. <clears throat> if my people who are called by my name, and I'm going to stop there just a moment. They're called by his name. They're in covenant relationship. Covenant, you're buying a home, you're paying a note, you're paying taxes, and all the other goodies with it. I tell people, uh, in 1983, we moved from Texas to Texas. <laughs> New York State. Yes, I know the taxes. I said, What's those numbers? Said, oh, that's yearly taxes. My man. You know, I had over 600 acres, a little place, a little born fence, cross fence. In the city of uh, uh, 1,700 people, we lived six miles out of town. I didn't like the crowds. For a long period of time, we had no neighbors for a long time, like a half mile away. And, and um, there's a little, little place, fence, cross fence, a little born. We had horses and everything. And get, guess what? My total taxes a year, state, school, everything was just under $6. Wow. Said, but this one didn't. Wow. And so I, I come up here and look at the real estate. Like, what, what's that number? <laughs> okay. So they cover, if my people call us and pray and seek my face. Remember the Lord said, Matthew 6, 33, seek you first to kingdom of heaven. My righteousness and all these other things be added to you. You need to seek him. I'm looking to him, the author, beginning, the end, the one that was, was not, that is forevermore, the almighty God. There's none like him. He stands at the very pinnacle of heaven, proclaimed by angels, feared by devils, and adored by saints. There's none like my God. I don't know if you feel what's coming in here. Praise God. Well, humble themselves. That's a big one. They had to humble themselves. Remember what I preached last week upstairs? So now you have to just face it, whatever it is. And admit you have a problem. I says to pray and seek my faith. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. In other words, if his people call by the name, cover relationship with they're, they're obeying God, but what's going to do is going to trigger a sound. He said, Then I'll hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. It's triggering a response from God. Yeah. That's what we do. Uh, that, that when we gather in prayer and seeking prayer, I mean, just, I don't know what you're feeling, what I'm feeling. I feel like my skin is trying to wrinkle right now. Oh, we ain't got going good yet. But but the presence of God comes in. Pastor talked about, he walks by, and he said, I feel something coming out from under the doors, David. They're God. And what we have here, we'll bring upstairs. Praise God. Amen. 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 But the thing is, I want to be in his presence. But as we gather and pray and really seek him and, and pray biblical prayers, Romans 4, God calls the things to be not yet the natural, though they are, because the spirit realm, they already are. I'm transferring from the supernatural to the natural with a word. It comes in. It begins to happen. And so as we seek him, it must ring for a championship fight. He does a lot of training, a lot of fighting different opponents, you know, in sparring and stuff, uh, et cetera, or uh, any athlete in foot train. The children of God have a problem with this. Amen. Uh, we need to see some real prayer means. I leave it there. But a real prayer means that we're seeking God, that, that we're releasing the Spirit of God. Amen. That there's someone praying in tongues over there and not shut down. With, we just don't want to do that in this one. Come on. But when we get a hold of the presence of God, we step publicly and we're ready to fight. Yes. Bible. The, 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 they looked at them and they said they could tell they'd been with Jesus. You know why? They're acting like Jesus. It was the miracles of Jesus, something in obedience that would trigger a sound or response from heaven. 
Let's stand. Let's go to pray your language, pray in the spirit, pray, bring heaven down. Heaven's already here. We are uh, five minutes ago. There's a total shakaya satariaha. The Lamb of God, I plead your blood over this class. Let a tsunami of the blood of Jesus Christ and Nazareth come over this class right now. Yes, Lift up that wave come in just moments ago, a few minutes ago, maybe five yes, minutes ago. Yes, I felt the wave of the Spirit come into this room. Oh, I felt the presence come into this room, Lord. Oh, Lord. And every sickness, every disease, every spirit of infirmity, every foul spirit of death, we cast out every demon, Lord. We come against every principality, every power, every ruler of darkness, every spiritual weakness in high places. We come in chains. I hear chains breaking. I hear chains. There's a sound from heaven. Chains are breaking. Fetters are being loose. Prison doors are opening. Oh my goodness. The amputees, their legs and arms are growing back. They're growing back. The amputees, legs and arms are growing back. Stay on this world with signs, wonders, and miracles by the Christ, the anointed one, the only anointed one. Our anointing comes from the finisher of our faith. We thank you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We lift up your heart. Every spirit of addiction, we break it right now. Not only fears I talked about last week, but those addicted, Lord God, to alcohol, to drugs, to tobacco, Lord, to pornography. Break those chains in the name of Jesus. We command the captain to be set free. Let there be a spirit of repentance come upon them. We come to you to be set free. In Jesus' name. Come on, touch God. I'm not up here to cheerlead. Will you pray? Praise God. Have your way, Lord. Praise you, Lord. We bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, I bless your holy name. From the rise of the sun to the going down of the sun. The name of the Lord, show Lord. Uh, you shed your holy blood. Uh, God, you shed it for us, Lord. Uh, God, you're worthy of the reward of your suffering, Lord God. Uh, you're worthy to see us come out and give it for you. are worthy uh, of the reward of your suffering, Lord. Uh, we bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. His name be praised forevermore. Holy, holy, holy. Oh, Lord Jesus, we praise you. God, have your way, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Have your way in this class. Have your way in this right now. God, walk among us. Oh, Holy Spirit, as the leaves of the tree, respond to you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. There's waves of the warmth of the presence of God just going in circles through this room right now. I thank you, Lord. I mean, right, right now, I want to announce it. Next Sunday, I told you, a couple of you announced the marriage here too. I forgot it. Um, next Sunday in this class, I'm going to measure about 15 to 20 minutes, lay down some good foundation, and then we're going to spend the rest of the class ends. Bring people don't normally come. We've been working with our group, uh, our team Supernatural, having them at my home growing out legs and stuff, just, you know, uh, getting used to doing it. Uh, arms out, uh, other sickness or disease, bearing wounds will pop open. My wife and I have babies all over the world. Amen. You say, I have babies all over the world. I said, don't sound right. I said, my wife and I have babies all over the world. And you never bear a child. We commend the womb to open, and they have children today. Amen. Some have multiple children. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And so we have that. Also, this marriage enrichment uh, 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 training and it is i uh, had the powerpoint to work with i'll be teaching and be sharing a lot and i don't care if you just get ready to get married uh even if i want to learn how to be a good husband later on uh or we've been married for decades uh i guarantee you're gonna learn something you never heard before mm -hmm. amen and, and uh and so uh the the last question i'll give my personal information is not embarrassed in any way i have added to it and uh, a little bit more but but anyway uh the thing i said it, it, it will be uh, on any relationship uh, I'm gonna, normally, I don't even let them cause it. I'm going to let you choose. But I said, I don't overload any circuits. Yeah, I've had married couples go racing out my class, literally. 
<laughs> I'm serious. Is that a joke? <laughs> so, and I, I put a line yesterday to be talking about romance. Amen. And um, I, I'll be very honest. Uh, most women know a whole lot, but they won't tell their husbands. So I would tell your husbands, you husbands, uh, what's your wife do, Derek? Okay. It's going to be a fun class. We have a lot of jokes. Uh, we, you know, we, we have fun. Uh, we'll have a bring a bag lunch. No children. No children. Uh, we don't want any interruptions or anything, you know, online. No, I hope to record it. But the thing is, um, uh, whether I do or not, hopefully it comes out. But uh, maybe make it later available uh, to turn the situation. But I don't want people to get one this. I won't get this. Or they'll tune in. I'll get 45 minutes. But I'm tired. i got to go do something else. It, you know, they're not going to get it all. I don't get any at all. Okay. So God bless you. Amen. We look for a break in between. Don't worry. It's going to be a fun class. Before you know that it'll be all done. But God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you.